Hey everyone, today I'm going to be putting a Van de Graaff machine in a vacuum chamber to see if we can still get static electricity in a vacuum. Now what I have here is a mini Van de Graaff machine. Usually you'll see it with a bulb on top. And these are the things that when you touch them in the museum, it makes your hair stand up. So let me turn it on here and show you how it works. So I have some metallic strips here. You can see it's attracted to it, but then it touches it and then gets repelled. Or if you just touch it like this, you get a pretty good shock. Now what's happening here is the Van der Graaff machine is positively charging this can up top. So because it's positively charged, what it does is it attracts other things around it because it pulls all the electrons in whatever's around it towards the positive charge and so it wants to fly towards it. But then once it touches it, it turns the thing that touched it positively charged as well, so it gets repelled. So that's why this metallic string here gets attracted back and forth between the can and my hand. And then if you just throw them at it, they'll just get repelled because as soon as they touch it, they become the same charge as the can and then they just fly off. So you can actually get some pretty good sparks with it. So what I wanna see is, will this actually create a better or worse static charge in the vacuum chamber? So because this won't fit exactly in my vacuum chamber this high, I'm going to set the can on the floor of the vacuum, but still connect this positive wire to it, so it still should charge up pretty well. And then I'm still going to connect to the ground wire in the back to make sure we have a closed circuit that keeps the charge flowing. Okay, it's definitely working. Let's vacuum it out and see what happens. Really weird. So that static charge just basically goes away once it's in the vacuum chamber. And then just let the air back in. And it looks like the charge is back now. You can see it's attracted to my hand again. Okay, so that's weird. It looks like it actually performed worse in the vacuum, not better. So let's try this again with some shorter strings. So as we charge the can up, these should be pushed away from the can because they become positively charged and they have the same charge, so they, re they are repelled from each other. The same reason why when you touch a Van de Graaff machine, your hair stands up. Okay, let's start the vacuum again. Three, two, one. Whoa, it looks like it's going down pretty quick. It like completely loses its charge right when I start the vacuum. We're at about half an atmosphere only. 0.3 atmospheres.
Okay, we're at a full vacuum now, and you can see it's not attracted to my hand at all. And those strings have now just kind of come to rest near the can, so it looks like they're not repelled from each other for some reason. Let's let the air back in. So why is it that under vacuum, it seems that we're not getting as much static electricity? So if you remember one of my previous videos where I put the Tesla coil in the vacuum chamber, you'll remember that we got very long electric arcs coming off while we were under vacuum at very low pressures. Whereas at higher pressures, those arcs didn't go as long. So it looks like we were able to get electric arcs easier under vacuum. So although we can't see them, we're transferring ions through the air. And it actually becomes easier to create that ion cascade when it's under low pressures because there's not as much air blocking that. So when you create an electric potential and the electron falls through it, it goes for a long ways before it actually hits something. So it gains a lot of speed and it can hit another uh, atom and it can, can create an ion and that creates this ion cascade. And so basically you can lose charge faster while you're under a vacuum. And so what was happening is our can was actually losing charge faster than it was gaining charge. And so it wasn't able to charge that much under the vacuum, whereas when we put the pressure back in, it was able to keep the charge on the can, and so everything could get charged up normally and get a high voltage on it. And so at really low pressures, it looks like static electricity wouldn't be that much of a problem. So thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. Consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet and check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.